All right, everybody, welcome to Beers and Branding at Anthem Brewing. <laughs> Heather Parsons, owner of the Cargo Room. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Lori Ford from Oakland Employees Credit Union. Thank you. My um, name is Kyle love. Golding. I am the CEO of the Golding Group, and I'm your host tonight. And I always say I'm going to sit down and not talk with my hands, and here I am standing and talking with my hands. So I'm sorry about that. That's my beer stand. Uh, go yeah, ahead. Use it as your beer stand. <laughs> the misconception sometimes with people who run business or do marketing for business is that marketing and advertising are the same thing, and that marketing is a one-way conversation, which is actually advertising. I'm looking at you, Heather. So oh, I'll yes. Start with you. Okay. Marketing is a two-way conversation where we give information and we receive information, which makes our next round of marketing better. Mm -hmm. So... Speak to that as your experience as owning a business and having to market that business and develop an audience. Give us a couple minutes on that. If you agree, disagree, and, and what's your okay. thought process? Well, I was actually, when Kyle kind of told me a little bit what we were going to start off talking about, I was really thankful because I just finished a book um, actually called The Thank You Society from Gary Vee. So I don't know if you or guys are familiar with Gary Vee. He's a great kind of business guru. So I was just reading this book, The Thank You Society, who is pretty much about that, developing conversations with your customers, developing relationships with your customers. One of the concepts that Gary Vee talked about was that you cannot view your customers as just walking wallets. And um, that's kind of the word that he used to describe it. And, and that's, I think, a proper term to use because a lot of businesses will just see their customers as, hey, this is money that could come to me. Whereas we need to be viewing our customers as somebody that you can build a relationship with. Um, that's kind of where I focus my business all about is how can I build, build relationships with these people? How do I get to know these people? I want to know what they want to see. Um, so my, my business is pretty much centered around these relationships that I have with them. And I, my, my goal is to never view them as a walking wallet. I, I want to have that communication. It's always, like Kyle said, it's a two-way street. Um, so, yeah. The key word is relationships. Yes. Absolutely. We do not like to just be a billboard. We want to be able to see what people need, see what the community is feeling and what type of responses are there. You know, whenever we post something or we have something, you know, on social media or if there's, you know, maybe something that even comes back in an email, I mean, it can be in many different avenues, then we want to be able to respond to it personally because we want that person to know that, hey, we care. You know, it's not just just us going out and saying, hey, we've got this special right now and just make it a billboard type of Facebook post. I mean, we go out there and say, all right, so what are your plans this weekend? Tell us what type of outdoor patios are awesome in, the, in Oklahoma City. You know, we want to be able to try to engage a conversation and to keep it going. And, you know, and in that run, we also try to support our fellow business people, you know, that are in the community and, you know, try to shed some light on some restaurants that are there and just be able to pass the baton, really, you know, so that way someone else will talk about it and someone else engages. Too many people use the terms marketing and advertising interchangeably. They're completely different concepts. Marketing is the work that you do before you get to advertising. Marketing is the understanding your audience, understanding your position in the industry, your competition, etc., finding a differentiation, what sets mm -hmm. you apart, what's unique about you, how you do business, and then you take that story and put it out in the world, and those avenues that are one way, print, TV, radio, etc., those are advertising. But your advertising still has the potential to have a two-way conversation and inform you of your marketing because what works and what doesn't work is the second part of the conversation. So if you're putting advertising out, what, no matter what, for traditional advertising, digital, experiential, whatever it is, if you're doing these activities and it doesn't work, and I don't mean the first time you do it, but the 12th time or the 15th time or the 100th time you do it, when it stops working, that is information coming back to you that you're doing something wrong or you need to make a change. Taking that information back in and internally and making your adjustments in how you do business, that's marketing. So marketing is a two-way conversation. Business advertising is a one-way conversation. I see lots of heads bobbing, so we're all agree on that, yes? I don't really do a lot of the traditional advertising. I, I utilize a lot of social media. And so when I'm putting something out on social media, I'm almost putting it in, in words that I'm like talking to a friend. So I'm just putting it out to the world. 
like, hey, this is what's going on in my life today. I'm very transparent about, you know, I had a bad day or I'm really busy this day or today's been a great day. So I'm, it's almost like I'm holding a conversation with my best friend. And so anytime I make it a point that anytime somebody tries to communicate via social media, that I need to respond to that person. I see a lot of companies fail in that aspect where people are commenting on different posts and they're just going unread or neglected. And I think that's the biggest fail because a company could easily just start that conversation right there is when that person is engaging with them and you just need to engage back. So I make it a point to try to respond to every single thing um, on all social media platforms. The great uh, advantage of digital channels social media, websites, email, etc., is the ability for us to communicate to a one-on-one. Uh, where mass marketing has a wider reach, but has a less personalization and a less likelihood of a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's the trade-off. So it's not just a, a, you know, a business and customer type of relationship. It's much more encompassing than that. It's a we, it's a we. Whenever something is posted, it's we are happy to help. We do this, you know, and so that we really does make a purpose in the long run. Building relationships with your highly likely potential clients, an authentic way, telling your story, communicating with them in a two-way conversation, allows you to gain the most valuable tool any business can have. Are you ready for this? the unsolicited endorsement. Word of mouth. That tool is more powerful than a Super Bowl ad for a small business. It really is. When you think about the fact that who you've drawn to you and why they're attracted to you and why they've become a brand ambassador, and it's an unsolicited, you didn't pay them to do it, you didn't ask them to do it, it's not because they're your best friend or because you bought them a beer, maybe, but <laughs> because you had a relationship with them that was authentic, you treated them well, your business transaction was what they expected it to be because you attracted them in the right way, you carried through with the business transaction, you're doing authentic business with them, authentic business storytelling, and now they're out in the world as a brand evangelist. The most powerful marketing tool you potentially can have no matter what your business is. So think about relationship building that builds brand evangelist is essentially what any focus should be when you're talking about a two-way conversation relationship building in your marketing and audience development. I, I kind of feel, you know, versus a traditional advertising medium, when someone's just, it's just thrown at you, buy this, buy this, buy this, but then your best friend comes up and says, you know, hey, I have this experience with this company I bought from this company, they're great. Who are you going to believe more, this company is just throwing money out, or your best friend who has that experience, that first-hand experience, like, look, I bought from this person, it was great, and, and so that's where I think that comes from, that word of mouth is, is very powerful, it's such a powerful tool. Businesses that create genuine relationships actually create new marketing tools that go forward and, and attract new business back to you. Everyone is not your customer. You're not going to attract everyone in the world. 100% of the population isn't buying your thing. And I don't care who you are. Coca-Cola, Budweiser, Apple, Nike, they don't, 100% of the population is not their client. 80% of the population is not your client. If you're a small business, it's probably less than 1% of the population of the city you're in. If you get out of a mentality of, I have to have everyone in the world know about me, like me, and want to do business with me, because you'll never say anything that might set someone in the wrong way, or you might say too much, which then they don't know what it is the heck you do, but instead you get highly focused on specifically what you do and how you do it, which is your, what sets you apart from everyone else, and then allow anyone who says, that's not what I like, I like the way these guys do it. Being comfortable with saying, cool, go do business over there, we're fine because we're gonna do business the way we do business, is the number one mistake uh, that business owners make is they try to make everyone love them and everyone is their client. That's the first failing you can have. You have to have that business that's not going to repeat or not engage with you the way you want to engage or appreciate the way you do business go away straight off the bat. The audience that comes to you because you're telling your story authentically, because you're communicating and relating to them, they come to you because a brand evangelist has told them they need to. If they've come to you and they actually feel like they know you and understand you and still want to do business with you, 
the likelihood that you retain them as a client goes way up. And the cost of attracting them and keeping them goes way down. The two ways you make profit is you have more people coming in the door and you become more efficient with every person that comes through the door. Every dollar that comes across your plate, the more of it you keep because you're not spending it on things that aren't working makes you more profit. There's 1.3 million people that live in Oklahoma City. Think about the percentage of 300 people versus 1.3 million. So you don't need everyone in Oklahoma City to know about and like your business or nonprofit or cause. You just need the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3% that wants to do business with you, that needs your product or service, is interested in supporting your cause, wants to join up for your nonprofit, wants to drink your beer, needs a checking account, needs a loan, needs, needs a mortgage, needs to shop for clothes. You only sell women's clothes too, right? I do. So you gotta cut yes. that number in half. Sunglasses. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sunglasses. Although, you know, some guys shop for our ladies. That's right. right? That's, That's right. right. So again, focus on who your client is. And, uh, and the second half of that equation is letting anyone who, who wants to do business outside of the scope of the way you do business go. The idea that if I get them one time, it'll be fine, or I'll make a little money and it'll be okay, that's chasing dollars. Chasing dollars make you inefficient. So what we say, more people and efficiency is how you make profit. If you're not making profit, your business is going out of business. That's just how it is. So focus on your audience, highly focus. Don't worry about people who aren't going to be attracted to you the way you do business, and then communicate that authentically. And you should develop a core audience that not only sticks with you and re are repeat business, but are actually out there actively trying to attract business to you. It's you, about, yeah, nurturing those those people that are your customers and not trying to go after everybody that's out of that realm. So it's about nurturing those people that are your customers, that are your advocates. So, yes. very much. People like to do businesses that meet expectations, but constantly want to be surprised and be given new options. That customer wants to think it's their idea. Yes. If you're practicing your business in a consistent manner, delivering as you've created expectations, your audience is still telling you what they like and what they don't like. Mm -hmm. If you're a restaurant with 20 items on the menu, something is number 20. Something is the least bought item. There's the least bought dress or style <laughs> uh, or type of accessory, right? Yes. There's always something at the bottom that could be cut. There's always something at the top that you have to stick to. So listening to your audience in a two-way conversation allows you to look at what's working, what's selling, what's most popular, and then what's not, and make a business decision to cut the bottom things, but you can't just willy-nilly cut them or replace them with something exactly the same or something you just made up in your head. That decision-making has to be based on what? Yeah. So. Actually, I just had this experience yesterday. So one of the things that I have to do for my business is go to market and purchase items for my business. And so being at market, there's I see a lot of things. It's very tempting. It's, you know, I like this, I like this, I like this. Like, I would love to have this. But that's not how I, I have to go in business-minded thinking my customers are what's shaping my business. And it's not about me and what I like and what putting putting those things into my business. It's about you know, is this something that my customers are going to like? I have to look at it from their perspective and um, kind of take myself out of the equation for a little bit. And so it, it is hard, um, you know, in some aspects because, of course, you know, it's very tempting to go in and just want to buy everything that you like, but that's not how a business should be structured. You need to look at it from a business mindset. Customer one-on-one, -on -one, one, you can tell when there's that symbiosis, right? You can tell when that conversation is going and driving and you feel like it's a good thing, but in the long run, sometimes you don't really know how far that really captured, how, how good your catch was from that batch of minnows. You have human interaction. You have what people tell you, but you also have digital tools. Mm -hmm. You have your online reviews, you have your metrics, you have your uh, digital channels that give you information. You can't only rely on your interpersonal communication, because these people know you, they see you, they're looking you in the face and they don't want to tell you, this sucks, because <laughs> they like you. And you have these other opposite end, which is they're anonymous online, or at least they're never going to be talked to you in a room together, 
So they tell you whatever they want. Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. As business owners, as marketing people, as people who are trying to help an organization grow, our job is to pay attention to both sides and use our logical brain to kind of wade through the highs and the lows and find some trends, find some things that correlate and then also relate back to us and our approach to doing business. And everyone's approach is different. Everyone's strengths and weaknesses are different. So I can't tell you, always look for this and never worry about this. But if people are always talking about speed of delivery or cost or something like that, and you know your cost is high, you know you're getting beat on that, but that's okay because you have better customer service, that's a trade-off, then you can take that trend and put it to the side. But if your focus is customer service and it's trending in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. both from your digital standpoint and from your interpersonal standpoint, now you know you have a problem that you have to address because if you're putting out your marketing and advertising, your outward communication that is telling people, we're great at this, this is what we do, this is our focus, and then you're failing at that, you're gonna actually drive away everyone that you potentially were getting to pay attention to you because you were just spinning them on advertising and not mm -hmm. actually having a two-way conversation about what you authentically do. So, use your tools, digital tools, use your interpersonal tools, use your trends and your data analysis, but use your logical brain and stay focused on what it is you do the way you do it. If you hear over and over that your price is, is higher than your competitors, but your item is handmade or your customer service is above and beyond, or you have more locations and all that works out to higher price, you have to, as an organization, tell yourself, okay, whatever idea sparked your business, has, it has to come from that. You can't start a business and go, hey, you know what would be awesome? If I were just like Apple, but cheaper. Because now you're doing something that's inauthentic and it's not coming from a place that you can actually achieve. You tell people you're as good as Apple, but you're cheaper. They experience you. They might believe it. They might not. The 1% that believes it and then they buy it. And it is cheaper, but it's not better. They're never coming back. The question is, do any of us on the panel, and I'll ask this to you when we get done, ask our clients for testimonials and then how do we use them? I mean, if they're so excited and so happy, then gee, don't you think there's more value in that type of review and that type of comment than if I just go and ask Kyle, hey, you've never done business with us, but we go and give a review for us. You yeah, know? don't I do mean, that. Don't do that. There's a the second half of it is that, is the recirculation of content on social media. So just because you publish one time, I went and had a great experience, or I bought something and it was wonderful. You could post that quote today, <laughs> next week, three months from now, at Christmas, New Year's Eve, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to use a piece of content one time. So testimonials are very powerful tools, they're great tools, but you don't have to put it out one time. You don't even have to put it out in the same format mm -hmm. over and over. Um, I, I take the quote and I use the text on Twitter. I take a screen capture of the quote and I take that picture and I use it on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I'm doing something that's audio based, I may say, well, you know, that one time this person said this and we really appreciated that. So taking your content and reusing it over and over again is another extremely powerful tool for you. And testimonials, brand, brand endorsements, et cetera, are our content that you can use. Mm -hmm. You can screen cap your Yelp reviews, your mm -hmm. Google reviews. Someone, someone says something nice on Facebook. Uh, so it has to be authentic as someone who's actually done business with you. And if they're real human beings, they're gonna to talk to other real human beings. And it gets back into that brand ambassador situation, for you, which is exactly what you want. Did that help? Okay, how many of you out there right now are using testimonials for your business? If something influences you to go out and do something, you're a regular human being, then other regular human beings could just as easily be influenced through the same channels, the same tactics that they use to get in front of you. This is more important than the experts standing up here speaking to you, is how did they get in front of you to begin with? How did they influence you to pay attention to them? What made you want to read Gary Vee's book? 
What made you want to come to Beers and Branding tonight? What made you understand the first time that Anthem was a local brewery that made craft beer? What happened in your brain to make that connection? And if you go and look at the person influenced you, how are they doing it? It's not what Gary Vee says, it's what he does. It's his repetition, it's the channels he uses, it's the formats he uses, it's the length of the, of the formatting is, it's authentic to him versus something that is created or brand centric. So uh, listen to what experts tell you, but watch what they do more importantly. Watch how they deliver it to you and how they got in front of you to begin with. If you break that down, if you back that up and figure out how they got in front of you like that, you could figure out how you can get in front of the people who make decisions about doing business with your business. Don't forget about A and B testing, all right? Because there's so much value. Send half of the people to this answer that's very fluid, very open, very wide, wide funnel. And whereas the B test is very succinct, very narrow crowd, and then gauge that. I mean, hey, oh my gosh, maybe you were wrong, but maybe the client is wrong. But sometimes the results need to speak. The data speaks for itself. For me, it's just staying true to my brand identity. I, you know, I can look out, of course, I have a lot of competitors in my industry and they may be doing different things and doing, you know, buying certain items, but it's still, I have to stay true to what my brand is and what I've created um, and not stray from that because I think that's what, keeps my customers intact and being aligned with my customers really is just staying true to my own brand identity. So, uh, Someone comes to you and they say, we want to do business with you, but we need this kind of scale and you can only do this kind of scale. Pure, unadulterated honesty. You just have to tell them the absolute truth. I want to, I can't. It's not good for you and it's not good for me. Um, please come back to me when I get to that scale, but I just can't. And then the second half is, mm -hmm. but I will do my best to find you someone they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, do not just turn them back out in the street, but if the worst thing you could do is if someone asks you to do a project like this and you know for a fact you cannot handle it, to take it on and make it up as you go, you'll destroy the relationship you have. We'll never get a sh another shot at that, and then you'll end up wasting a lot of time that you can't recoup in, in actual legitimate business branding. So. Thank you for being honest with, uh, there are clients I don't, I, I'm not ready for, because that's a very good, that's a mistake people make is, I've been in business three days, I'm ready to take on a multi-billion dollar corporation. No, you're not. <laughs> I've been in business five years, there's a lot of stuff I'm not ready to take on. So recognize it, and then having a very open, honest, frank conversation, and then be willing to be part of the process to help them get where they need to be, because that keeps you involved and engaged, and when that works out, or maybe there's a chunk of that that they can be spun off, it can most likely come back to you and you'll be ready for it. I think you responded perfectly, just kind of being almost that facilitator, just staying a part of that process through the whole way. Like he said, just don't say, I can't handle this and leave and be. I mean, you still want to be a part of this process, maintain that relationship through that aspect. So. Um, I think it helps if you set up your boundaries prior to that rejection, you know? So that way when you say, hey, my perfect client is this, this, and here's what I'm shopping for in a client, before, and like, of course, and you've done your due diligence, you've already researched them, and you're like, oh gosh, I'm not what they're looking for. I, I can't handle their volume, I can't handle this subject, whatever it is, that if you already know upon that meeting that that's not your client and that you've got to say no, then say that up front to them because they'll respect you more if you say that in that opening to say, hey, I'm going to let you know, you know, I'm really looking for this kind of business, this type of clientele. Maybe you're that person. And, you know, in, in all realms, be positive and, you know, and, and to be hopeful, maybe they've got the side gig. It isn't what you thought. Maybe it's a new business and you are that client, right? Or that person. So, you know, if you're up front and you create your boundaries 
upon what your goals are, then you're going to earn their respect in the long run. And too many business owners have the opposite idea that they want to, again, want to attract everyone and never want to turn down business and always want to look bigger than they are, uh, more accomplished than they are. At the end of the day, you're going to have to get in a room and talk with a client. And if that works, if you're really slick and you talk your way through that, you have to execute. You have to deliver. Number one, we, you're, as you're all shaking your head like, right, you're like, nobody's, nobody's buying that, right? Don't do that because nobody's buying it. Number two, don't try to be sneaky with it. Don't try to trick people with your marketing and advertising because you're going to attract someone who's going to have an expectation you can't fulfill. If you're honest and authentic in your marketing and advertising, if you're having a two-way conversation, if you're having relationships with the people who are potential business with you, you're going to attract the right people for the right reasons who are much more likely to be someone in your wheelhouse or someone that's enough in your wheelhouse you could take them to the right place. So it's kind of full circle to where we started, which is being authentic in your communication and, and, and trying to create relationships as opposed to putting out false narrative advertising bluster about the greatest, biggest, best, you, no one's better, can't do it, you know, any of that action turns people off immediately and then the people it attracts, mm -hmm. it attracts them for the wrong reasons. So if we do our good job properly from the beginning, explain who we are, what we do, what our position is, what's authentic to us, and how we do business, you really aren't very likely to have someone come in the door who's trying to work outside that scope. And if you do, say no. That's the key. Say no to business you shouldn't handle. So very much know who you are, your capabilities, know your competition, and know your market or the audience that you sit within mm -hmm. so that you can, again, be attracting people who come to you for the right reasons, right? Say no to the stuff that you shouldn't do. And I'm going to end on this. This is the last piece. I love this, this little gem here, right? People who do what you do, do events, build websites, run credit unions, are in fashion merchandising, have stores, do retail, etc. Politics. Maybe not politics. <laughs> People who do what you do, who you would call your competitors, they're not the problem. Your competitors aren't taking business from you. Your competitors are forcing you to do what you do the best that you can do it with the people you should be doing business with. The people who are automatically gravitating to your competitor are just simply going there because that's how they do business. As long as your competitors obviously are being morally and ethically upfront. So, someone's trying to undercut you ethically, tell some bad stuff about you, you can get mad about it. But if you're losing business to someone who does business similar to you, but it's not the way you do it, if you really look, if you're really honest with yourself, those clients that are over there, you don't even want. Now, you want the economics, but there's nothing about that client that you actually want or could retain. So don't worry about what audience or what money that your competitors are attracting and taking. Only worry about who you can attract and retain as your client. Use your competitors to make you better and more focused. The worst thing you can do is, well, it's working for them, so I'm going to do it too. Because it's not authentic. You'll, you'll lose that battle every time. So go to battle with your armor that you own and possess, whether it's expertise, cost, speed of delivery, customer service, uh, your, your experience, something that you uh, it's authentic to you. And don't worry that people are beating you in other ways that you can't control. Let it go. If you stay focused like that, you'll be fine. You will not go insane, and you'll actually make a lot more money. With that, I'm going to end it, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. And Heather for being on the panel with us. Uh, you know, we do this every quarter, so we'll do this again in November. Uh, since If you guys signed up on Eventbrite for tickets, you're going to get emails from us. So uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Go to the website. This video will be up next week. Go and try to find yourself. See the answers to your questions. And if you have to think of other questions, email us, tweet us, Facebook us. We'll answer them. I'm going to hang out tonight until everyone's questions are answered. I'm sure the girls will be hanging around. Let's get another beer from Anthem. Another round for Anthem beer. Woo! And, of course, Wedge Pizzeria for the great yes. snacks and appetizers over here. Thanks to Oklahoma Employees Credit Union.
They're our sponsor for that. Our I, pleasure. I want to thank my help. team, Toby and Justin from Revolve Productions. I'm Joe Mahomes. This was his idea to begin with. Yep. <laughs> and my girl Sarah, wherever Sarah floated off to. She's a kick-ass little videographer who's going to be making some cool videos of all this. So uh, that's the 1219 crew. They uh, make this possible for me to stand up here and sound like an expert.